Greetings, summoners, and welcome to How to Be a Lane Bully, The Secrets of the Alt. This is the second part of my Lane Bully guide. This guide will update and expand upon the original guide. Um, I feel that the information you'll find in both guides goes a long way into supporting the lane bullying playstyle. Uh, I can't stress enough how important it is to design your loadouts to support your playstyle and try to avoid creating a playstyle that goes along with a build that you might have read about somewhere, heard about from someone who uh, has experience with that particular playstyle. So don't just read a build and um, you know you see a hard carry build and then you try and play them like a hard carry. Don't just do that. Just exp exp explore your own playstyle and design your build around how you want to play. Okay, that's the trick to this game, I think. And there's a lot of heroes that represent a lot of different playstyles. So the trick is you find a hero that can uh, exemplify your playstyle, and then you build around that, not not the other way around. Like don't you don't take an Annie and try to be a a bruiser with her, obviously. So you can see that there's plenty of heroes to express yourself with. You pick one that you want to express yourself with, and you create the build to, to go ahead and do that. And that's what we've done here with my Garen Guide series, is I'm expressing a play style, and it's not the only play style, it's just an effective one and an efficient one. And you can go ahead and so copy it and put your own spin on it. You know, this is just a starting point for you guys. Um, alrighty, uh, the overview of this guide, I'm going to start out with a core item and mastery update. Uh, there's been a few little changes to League itself, and uh, I found some improvements here and there, so we'll go over that first. Uh, we're going to revisit the kit, and I'm going to talk to you about a little bit some of the, the myths and secrets surrounding uh, Garen's alt. Uh, there's some, some things we need to talk about that weren't addressed in the first guide that I want to get into. Um, we're going to get into a detailed combo analysis, exactly what is his combo and how much damage does it do. We're going to go very detailed into that. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about animation canceling. This might be uh, a new concept for some of you. This is old school Dota, which in case some of you guys don't know, uh, League of Legends is based on a, on a mod for Warcraft 3 called Dota. And this system, this animation canceling system, was borrowed from that. Now this they borrowed heavily from Dota. They've made a lot of new changes here, but the this particular system is the same. So we'll get into the anatomy of an auto attack, you know exactly what it is, and uh, we'll talk about how to animation cancel. Then we're going to talk about counter building, adjusting your build. You know, you're going to get about the same core every single game. Now beyond that is you have uh, swing items that you can use to counter the enemy team. And we're going to talk about uh, three different ways that I like to counter the enemy. Three different uh, counter builds. Then we're going to talk about some heroes that are good against Garen in a top lane scenario. I mean, he's as fantastic and as... Uh, tier 1, as Garen is, he is not in, immune to certain types of play styles, so he has weaknesses. Now, that said, if we accept those weaknesses, we can learn how to deal with them and minimize, uh, you know, minimize the damage that they cause. So we can deal with his weakness, we can sort of play around his counters, but the worst thing you could do is pretend like Garen doesn't have any counters and uh, like, pretend like you're immune to uh, being harassed in some cases so you need to be aware of them and then once you're aware of them you can deal with them but we'll get into that later um, and I'm going to finish up with uh, some ideal team what in my opinion is an ideal team comp for Garen and some clips that show uh, some good teamwork and how well Garen works with certain other types of heroes so there's lots of stuff to get to you guys know my guides, they're not short, and this one is going to be no different, it's going to be long. Um, I'm going to try and fill it with detailed information though, and uh, I'm going to have some clips in here and some commentary. So right away, let's just go ahead and get started. Got a lot to get to, so let's dive right in to the updates to uh, Garen's core item build and Masteries. Let's just get that out of the way. Okay, so starting out... 
let's talk about some changes to League. Atma's Impaler got a small nerf. Uh, it, the bonus attack damage it gives was reduced by 25%, which is mm, not too bad. It, it was strong. It, it was overpowered in a way because it was giving you more attack damage than, you know, the top tier. Uh, you know, it was giving about 60 attack damage, which is like on par with uh, your IEs, you know, your Infinity Edges and those top tier type damage items. So it was a little bit too strong. So they toned it back a bit, but they left the rest of it intact, which is great. So let's take a look at the, the core item changes. St so everything is the same. We're going to start out with Boots of Swiftness uh, from the original guide. That still applies here. This is your first 650 gold into this. Now, the, the big change here first item instead of warm mogs i've changed it to frozen mallet now the reason behind this is it gives me a little bit more damage so we have some uh, more early threat which i think a lot of people wanted out of this play style they wanted a little bit more early threat and if you're not a supreme farmer if you can't guarantee that you know on average you you can get 85 to 90 percent of the last hits then the warmogs atmos combo gets it's a little bit slower for those folks so they wanted a little bit something and i did too i want i wanted uh a more uh early threat and this gives me damage hit points pretty much everything else that uh the warmogs does but again damage and very important is it gives me an on hit effect uh it gives me the great slow and this lets you stay on people, like you use your Q to get at people, and you can stick to them. And we're going to talk about how animation canceling will help you here, and a few other things about it. But so this is the core. Now these four items were in the last guide. It was just a different order. I would have the, the Warmogs here and uh, the Mallet coming at the end. So I really just changed the order here, and it's, it's working out very well for me in the current meta of League of Legends. So... That's the core item change, and we'll take a look at the runes exactly the same. Still 22 attack damage, still will not recommend anything other than that. Um, the masteries I did tweak a little bit. Okay, moving on to the masteries. Uh, as you can see here, I, I've switched from a 030 to a 624 build. Um, the reason that I did that is because there's some great stuff on the attack tree that's just worth getting um, early on. The... The three attack damage and four to uh, enemy minions is fantastic. Uh, it also goes on neutral creeps as well, which is good. And ten bonus damage to towers, another fantastic one for one point. Um, what I did to to make room for that is uh, I dropped two indomitable. You could use the the minion one; it's probably a better idea here, even though it's not showing it. Um, and put the points there. And uh, the other one I got rid of was the bladed armor. We don't need this. And I got rid of the cooldown reduction. So, um, oh, here it is. The cooldown reduction right there. So to, I got rid of those three things that weren't really synergizing with my play style. Um, the cooldown reduction doesn't really synergize with it. It's not going to, that small amount isn't going to make any kind of a, a noticeable difference um, until you're way past the point where you would care so instead we take the early game advantage here with the bonus attack damage and damage to towers i've also got the armor reduction tower so it makes my uh attacks on the tower pretty good um you can do a nice little run in q r or excuse me you can swing q and swing again and then get back that gives you a nice little spike damage on the turret and you can run out before the they can really harass you too much. It's a good way to get some damage in on the turret. Alrighty, so that's basically the updated items and runes uh, portion of this. So we're going to move on to the kit and take a look at that now. Okay, here we go. Alright, uh, Perseverance. N really not too much more to say on this. Uh, it's scaling uh, health regeneration. It encourages you to build hit points. If you want to go against the grain and not abuse uh, this this skill, you do so uh, just knowing that you're building him in a little lesser. It's not as efficient as do as in doing what the skills encourage you to do. So okay, moving on. Decisive strike. We talked about it a lot. Fantastic skill. It's still maxed first. 
Um, one thing we didn't notice or we didn't mention is that it applies on hit effects. Uh, you know, if, as if this thing couldn't get any better, it also will apply an on hit effect. So when we get with our adjusted build, the mallet first item, it, your approach skill now will also slow them. And it's a nasty slow. So this combined with your auto attacks is going to lock up an opponent. And when, it, when they're silenced, now it, it almost turns your silence into a stun because they can't use any skills and they can't really move around with the slow effect it really makes uh, your Q a scary proposition so and we're going to talk about how much damage uh, the combo will do later on and you need to understand that uh, when you're using a slow effect this is very important to to do what's called the animation cancel and I'll get to that later but this the animation cancel is not just for auto attacks it also applies to used skills in a lot of cases so these these actual the Q can have some uh, backswing and we'll talk about that um, so that that's what we're gonna get into the the main update to this skill in this guide is just mentioning that it applies your auto uh your on hit effects in addition to everything else it does courage uh, unchanged since the last guide still one point at level two uh maxed last uh q obviously still maxed first um yeah this is a great skill it's your second passive is what it really is and you need to get it charged up as soon as possible so that's why we get a point at level two instead of waiting to level four because all those last hits give you extra uh armor and magic resist so there's no point in wasting it uh just to get e a little bit sooner judgment uh spin to win my least favorite skill um i don't know why i think it's just because of how garen gets a bad rap because of this skill but there's some uh, interesting properties to this skill and they tie heavily into what i want to talk about with his alt but uh first of all you can cancel this skill like you can use it for the ghost walk and you, you should remember that this does not apply on hit effects. So if you if you've run up to someone, you've hit them, you've started your combo, you've queued them, uh, they're slow, and then you spin, the slow effect wears off, and then they can get away. So keep in mind, you know, the damage that you're putting out with spin is is you know, it's not nothing, but it also lets them get away. So you may want to cancel it early. You may use it just to spin, get in front of them. Uh, you know, with the ghost walk principle, get in front of them and then cancel it before it's all the way done so you can start your auto attacks again and start locking them up again. You know, getting in front of the hero makes him kind of path around you a little bit, so that's, that's good for obstruction purposes. So it's not useless, but it's not, you know, the main damage output for Garen. And people who think you just run in and spin and run out, they're not using Garen correctly. So the other thing you need to know about spin is that like all skills that have a, a play animation or a, a wind up animation in this case you could call it, uh, you can use, you can queue up uh, other skills. The thing you need to understand about spin is that you can use your other skills while you're spinning. You can turn on your uh, queue to give you movement speed and then when it finishes it will still... Uh, apply the the silence if there's time left so you can turn this on you can turn on your courage to give you defense you can uh, even use your alt and i think this is what a lot of people don't realize that if you're spinning and a lot of enemies don't realize this either while you're spinning if you get in range of a hero and you use your alt and then you stop you don't put any more inputs you don't issue any attack commands or movement commands when the spin finishes he will alt even if the hero has gotten far out of range of his alt, even if the hero has flashed or teleport, the alt will still go off. So that's something that you need to understand. That's why you see sometimes people say, oh, it's, his alt gets bugged or he has a, an exploit. It's not an exploit. It's intended. He's intended to be able to use all of his skills while he's spinning. So that's, that's a really cool aspect of spin that uh, goes overlooked, especially with the alt. You know, a lot of people know to, to use Q while you're spinning to make it fast. But the other, what they don't realize is that if you Q up your, uh, your R, you Q up your alt, it will go off even if they've traveled out of range after your spin finishes. So 
that's something you need to understand. Um, and and the the other thing about the alt is uh, some people will say that it has that that bug to it where you can you know that the the myth is that it's a bug. The secret is that you can queue it up not only with your spin, but you can actually queue it up during an auto attack animation or a decisive strike animation. And I'll show you that uh, in a clip here. So let's take a look at that clip. Okay, so now in this clip, what we're gonna see here is how to use uh, the, some of the special properties of the, of the alt, like how you can queue it up while other things are going on. So Ash has gone ahead and given us vision here on, uh, we've got a low Kogma and a full health Udyr. So let's take a look at how this plays out here. So uh, I'm, I'm headed immediately for the Kogma. Ash uh, is able to hit him with one frost arrow, so I know he's gonna be locked up enough for me to get in range and uh, do some damage to him. Now, if you take a look here, uh, Udyr, he comes at me for a second. He wants to get me, but he realizes that I'm too fast. Right there is the point where he realizes that I, I, he'll never catch me in time to save the Kog'Maw. So instead, his only hope of helping him is to go after the Ash. And see, he's, he's, he wants to get me, but I'm too far. So instead, he, he goes ahead and goes turns back and he stuns Ash. So Ash is out of the picture for the rest of this fight as far as Kog'Maw is concerned. She has to d go away from Udyr. Now, I continue to go after Kog'Maw. Now, if you see, my, uh, my decisive strike is, is on. And it's, uh, it's, uh, you can see the cast animation here. It's, it's, it's going through. Uh, the decisive strike animation keeps going and there as soon as the the animation or the cast time plays it deals its damage and applies the slow effect in this next frame here so right there i've 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 used my cue that's all that's happened so far now immediately afterwards i i do two things i click on him to auto attack him as you can see uh it's about to start an auto attack uh animation here and while he's got the wind up for the auto attack that means between the point at which uh, I click on him to attack and the point at which he actually delivers the auto attack damage I've also queued up the R as you can see the circle here is the the alt circle he's in range now he's moving out of range and my attack is coming at him so what I want to happen here is we'll see what happens so uh, the the auto attack begins to play and right there the auto attack hits so it was only a few frames between the end of the decisive strike at which my auto attack hits it's not enough to kill him yet but even though now if we keep playing this out here there's the auto attack damage and the rest of the auto attack sh showing up it's still he's still alive um, now as we keep going here he's way out of range of the of the alt if I had tried to start it now but because I already hit it while he was in range and I was auto attacking there you go that's what that's what happened that's how you can kind of abuse the range of the alt you start it while something else is going on now there is how me sneaking it in in an auto attack but you can also sneak it in um, uh, on a decisive strike you can also sneak it in and of course the spin is the easiest because it's the animation plays out for so long but it's the same principle all of these t all of these things here operate on the same principle meaning that you queue up the the attack to go right when uh something else is going on so there you go that that's how you abuse the the alt and uh, as you can see here i'll play the rest of the clip and you can see how it plays out um, Udyr comes at me, Ud he bombs, I'm almost dead, I gotta get out, but I'm great bait, Udyr comes, and that's it, uh, I end up getting out here, I don't get blown up by a Teemo mushroom, which my pals come, and they almost blow one up right there, I'm sure there's one right there, but I make it out, so that's the end of the clip. Okay, now what I would like to take a look at is some battle theory um, and some combo analysis. This is a great program, by the way, this uh, little website here for building, testing out builds. Uh, I'll put some links in my guide in the description. All right, so this is a, a, 
we're going to go some battle theory on the core. Just take a look at the core because we can't really always guarantee what items are going to come here and you know if the game will even go this long. But th this core we can depend upon reliably. So let's take a look at some battle theory core, some core battle theory. All right, so um, the average auto attack you're going to deal is about 144 damage. Your decisive strike will deal uh, 595 damage. Uh, your judgment, okay, it says 1728 here, but that's like in a best case scenario where you're dealing damage to all five heroes, uh, with this, uh, with these stats, that would be like dealing that, that's what it would do if you were dealing damage to five carries at the same point in time. These are like what a carry would be. Um, now, so basically divide this in half, or excuse me, in, in a fifth or so for a single target, uh, combo when you want to calculate the the combo so divide it by five um and, and to get a rough idea of what it's going to deal uh Demasi and justice that's your alt okay so if we add in so what is the full combo the full combo is this uh, it's an auto attack immediately into a queue immediately into another auto attack so you want to cancel the the uh, you can cancel the backswing of your first auto attack by immediately pressing Q. You can cancel the backswing of your Q by immediately attacking the hero in range. Um, and then you spin and uh, then you alt. So if you add up those uh, five things all together, um, you get about this. It's going to be a little bit more, I think, uh, depending on. I used a very low estimate for judgment, I used about 200 and 200 even. For the judgment damage, it'd probably be closer to about 1687. Uh, maybe maybe it could deal 300 or something. So maybe 1587 here or so for your combo. V very good. Now now take the alt out of it. It's still 1100. So you've got a, a, a combo that'll spam that you can spam you know pretty often that'll deal 1100 damage. Um, and not to mention give you excellent mobility. Like you're ghost walking through most of this and. Uh, yeah, um, it is also applying your on hit effects. So that that's your combo. It's the swing, Q, swing, spin, alt. And remember, we can queue up our alt while the spin is still going on. So a lot of people think that they have at least until you're done spinning to get out of the way, you know, um, f to get out of the way of the alt. Now, and also, you can cancel the spin. Um, and just deliver your alt right away if that's an advantage for you too. So uh, that that's your combo, and this is sort of the analysis of that. Now let's move on to the next part. Okay, now in this section of the guide, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you counter build. Uh, again, this is our core. This is what we're going to be getting just about every game. But uh, where do we go from here? Well, a lot of it depends on what the enemy team comp is. Um, Let's just say that they're going with the meta. They've got a balanced team comp, uh, some attack, you know, good amount of attack damage, and a good amount of AP. So a balanced team comp. This is what I get in uh, versus a balanced team comp. Uh, versus mixed damage, mathematically, the best defense is raw hit points, and and that's what we're emphasizing with this build. And not only uh, we're getting raw hit points, and also the guardian angel is a great item versus mixed damage. Uh, gives magic resist and armor, and of course the uh, the great uh, passive, where you're essentially invisible, invincible for four seconds, and then come back to life with some 750 health. So there's that. Um, the war mogs is the best single item uh, hit points that you can get. So for mixed damage, this is our best choice. It also feeds into some damage from the atmos. So we've got some nice synergy there. So there's your 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 balanced build uh, versus your average balanced team. Now let's take a look at, uh, this is my AD heavy build, like if the enemy's got, you know, Yees or Olaf's or uh, scary um, ranged heroes, auto attackers like Vayne and Ash and so on, like if they're just heavy, they have more than your, you know, they've got a couple of them maybe. Uh, this is what I get. Thorn Mail, first item uh, off the core. This uh, is, deals great damage to those carries. It makes you, the carries have to ignore you, but they can't because you uh, silence them and lock them up. So it's a catch 22. Randwin's Omen, more hit points, great armor, 
and it has another slow effect on its active. So this makes you the, the carry killer for uh, the enemy AD carries. That, that's your build for that. Um, next one up is the heavy AP, the other scenario. <clears throat> first item off the core is of course the force of nature gives you fantastic 76 magic resist it's the best single item magic resist in the game it also gives you uh, a, a huge boost to your health regen and great movement eight percent movement speed which is nothing to to uh, shy away from that's that's a great buff there so you can get at those carries you can chase them down you lock them up with your silence and your slow or you get at the AP heroes, you lock them up with your silence and slow, and the Banshee's Veil, if it comes that long, uh, now that you've got that spell shield effect, more uh, health and more magic resist. So this is your, your mage killer build, and they're going to have a big hard time trying to get through this, this build here. So that's the idea behind counter building. It's not the same build every game. Uh, you want to be adaptable. Now, most of the time... You know, if you're on a five-man team and you're playing a five-man team, they go with a meta. That's what makes it a meta. And the, the meta is a balanced uh, range of damage. But if they get cute and try and do some, like, uh, this would be an, an early game versus an early game team comp. They, uh, they you know, they, they've got all those AP heroes hoping to create enough early advantage that... Uh, they they steamroll or or maybe you get this when their ad it's a balanced team it might be a, a balanced team comp but their ad carry is not doing too much and their ap carry is just destroying you in that case you want this and vice versa with this you know if their ap carry got picked on and he's kind of a non-factor and you know the ad carry is going off then, then here's your here's your plan for that. So it's not even just team comps. It's just like looking at at who's doing the most damage per game and figuring out which of these builds you want to to go with. So that's how you counter build. That's how I do it. There's other options in here too. I mean, there's room for your own your own items to to come in here and you, you figure out what you like best. But uh, there's some flexibility. This is three plans, and, and this is how I do it. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next section of the guide. But now we're going to talk about some heroes that are effective against Garen. And the first one we're going to start with is Teemo. Uh, Teemo is a good hero to choose against Garen because he's ranged. He has a speed burst that is that can match Garen's speed. So, And he's got a, a passive on his auto attack that really interferes with my ability to regen off of my passive. So he he can uh it's hard to get at Timo. it's hard to chase him you, even with your uh, awesome foot speed he's got uh, a spammable speed buff that he can get away and he's got range on you so you're at a disadvantage right there um you need to get real close to hit him and he can just hit you from far away so and and then he hits you and he blinds you and so even if you swing at a, a minion or at him or something he can blind you stop you from getting uh that last hit and then pelt you with his toxic shot now the toxic shot recently it didn't get what's called a buff what it got was fixed um, meaning that it'll reapply as soon as it, it it hits which essentially is a big buff because it wasn't doing that before and it sent it wasn't dealing as much damage so now each tick will apply the initial uh toxic shock boost the toxic shot boost on the first uh, as soon as it hits so he got a little buff is the ascent the long and the short of it even though they didn't call it one it was just a fix moving on all right so let's take a look at, at, at you know how uh, Timo can interfere um, so it's, we're tied at the laning phase I've gotten a, two kills on him he's gotten two on me I got both my kills first so I have a small experience advantage here uh, a couple levels so I'm just uh, farming up he's pushed his lane and I'm gonna show you like how to kind of last it a little bit under a turret uh, two hits for a, a melee minion one hit for a caster minion is the rule if uh, if they're being attacked by a turret now sometimes you'll you'll notice uh, it'll take you two swings to finish them off so in that case you want to uh, make sure you get a uh, swing in before the tower hits and that's essentially it so I'm just getting the minions here Timo I just saw him peeking up on that bush um, here he comes and this is how, this is what he does he blinds you he's fast so he can get in and he can harass and I can't really respond to it 
Um, my only response is to, to go for minions and try and farm as best I can here. Um, so I'm doing pretty good. I haven't missed too many. Um, he tried to stop me from getting the gold on that one. I got, got my attack off quick. Um, missed one there. Uh, missed another one there. And he's and he's pelting me on top of it. So this is uh, um, how, how Timo, a competent Teemo player can uh, effectively uh, keep you off of your game a little bit here. Um, that said, I'm, I'm still doing okay in the farm department. To, in order to, to play his game, he has to give up on some last hits too. See, I tried to go through the bush to get him there, but uh, you know, you hit a shroom, he's too quick anyway, you can't get at him, it's just not even worth it to try and do it. I'm just going to take more damage doing it. I'm much better off here uh, staying on the creeps. Um, so that's the way. That's what you have to do. Kind of, you have to. Uh, you know, it's damage control. He's pick. You're 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 counter picked at this point. You know, a Teemo up top versus a Garen is a counter pick, and he knows that. Um, I'm sort of just trying to buy myself some breathing room here with a heal. Uh, I spin to slow down the minion uh, to lower the minion health, so I can maybe get some last hits in there somewhere. I'm trying to get near it. But as you can see, it's so hard. I'm having to use Decisive Strike to run up, get a last hit, and just get out. And even then, I'm still taking damage. So this is uh, one way uh, to get it to you know to get it Garen and to to stop that that lane bullying gameplay. Now that said, he's gankable here. You know, I, I don't have a jungler who wants to come up and gank him, but he he's been up here long enough that he would definitely be gankable to a competent jungler. Um, He's, uh, he's playing a little little bit loose now. He knows he's got an advantage on me. But I do have, still I do have uh, some threat to him. Um, oh, I'm going to get killed here, yep. And so now the jungler comes and it's way too late. And, you know, the jungler's going to get locked up here by Nautilus. So, came close. You know, I, I was a little bit ahead of him in the laning phase. Uh, I had killed him twice. But you can see how uh, Teemo gets effect, or Teemo can be very effective against Garrett. So that's one hero that can do it. Now uh, we can talk about uh, some other heroes that can do it. Okay. Now in this clip, what we're gonna see is uh, another hero that's uh, great against Garen, Olaf. Um, you might hear it said that playing top is all about counterpicking, and to a certain degree, that's true. Um, there's a lot of strategies you can go through during uh, during team selection to avoid getting counterpicked, but uh, this is sort of a, an example of a worst case scenario here. Okay, my buddy Moses is going to help me out. This is just me and him. There's no one else in this game. Uh, I told him exactly. I mean, he's a great Olaf, so he, he knows exactly what to do. Um, you see, we're just having a little uh, war for the bush. I win bush control for what it's worth um still a while before meaning so he just goes back to heal um i did win bush control there so that's a plus but uh we'll see how it goes okay so here come minions and olaf with him he's brazen he just ignores me he knows i'm there so minions engage Hit him once, decisive strike, hit him again. It's my three hit combo. I come out on top a little bit, but um, unfortunately, Olaf's cooldowns are, are faster than mine. And he's got more armor and more uh, hit point potions, uh, along with we have the same heal. We both have heal. Um, so, yeah, he also has lifesteal. So he gives him fantastic sustain. Olaf is an excellent hero to bring against uh, not only Garen, but uh, a number of different tops that are uh, tanky and rely on uh, their sustain to keep him in the lane. Because uh, he, can, he can sustain himself better and poke better. Uh, Nasus he's excellent against. He's excellent against Renekton. Um... He has a, a very good game against uh, Talon, uh, Malphite, an excellent game against. Um, you see other heroes that he's good against. Anyone who's tanky. He's a, he's a tank killer in a lane. Um, so, 
You see, every time I go for last hit, he's using his uh, reckless swing on me. I, it costs him nothing, and it deals a hefty amount of damage. So, uh, last hit under a turret if you can. I'm pretty good at it. Uh, the trick to do it is um, for a, a melee minion, two hits by the turret, then you get, you swing. So let's see if you can get. Uh, so I gotta stay away from him though. So I'll get this one here. Two hits, swing. One, two hits, swing. Okay. Now you go for the low caster minions. You get what you can. If you're good at hitting under a turret, you can turn negative lanes like this uh, and at least break even by uh, getting last hits under the turret where your opponent isn't as good. So I do pretty good there, you know, for considering I'm under a turret and getting wrecked by an Olaf. At the same time as an impossible one. You'll see that. I think you should be able to look at that. Yeah. And Brolof is the most obnoxious of the Olaf skins too. So expect to see that. It is pretty funny though. Okay, so this is about all you can do. Now, the only advantage that I have at this point is that... It, in order to maintain his sustain, Olaf uh, has to life steal, meaning that his lane is essentially always pushed. Um, I should be able to keep it, uh, you know, reasonably close to my turret and put him in a good position to get ganked. So go ahead and try and work with your jungler. It's just me and him in this game. There's no jungler, but that's the only sort of. Uh, way to 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 counter this strat is to come at him heavy you might have to bring mid and the jungler um or you know you never know if you wait for me to get the alt and if i had a jungler we we can probably get him between the two of us with my alt but that'd be about the only way um in any case this this is yeah last hit under the tower where i can i pay for it by getting reckless swings to the grill um, I can keep him at bay, and that's about it. Like I, I can keep him off my turret, but eventually, this this is a, over a long period of time. This is a lost lane. He can pressure my turret. He can farm at will, and he's about. I think I'm going to check the minion score here pretty soon. He's about eight creeps ahead of me. Nine, eight or nine. Um. It's not doing the greatest job at last hitting. If I was on the other side of this, I'd be way ahead, I think. But that's a problem with auto attackers, too. Um, they screw up their own last hits. They deny themselves. You know, uh, With Garen, each swing is precision. Hopefully to get last hits or make some progress. Yep, I'm down by eight creeps, which is not bad, considering... Um, Again, the only advantage here, uh, he's close. He's gang he's in, you know, gank city right now. Um, but this is an awful spin and you'll see why you should never not spin in scenarios like this, because look, I just put all of the minions out of range to get hit. That was just pathetic. I could have gotten five, maybe six of those last hits if I hadn't gotten a little scared at Olaf. I was thinking I had to scare him away with this spin. And it worked, but it cost me all the minions, so it's a, a good exchange for him. He still got potions. Um, he's, again, you see him pushing the lane to maintain his sustain. So that's that's his game. That's that's Olaf for you. Two hits and get him. You gotta try and get whatever last hits that's yeah, impossible. This one and got at least. So, you know, try and mi minimize the damage by being a good last hitter. You know, they, they can... You've got your, your passive. He's gone back to get items, which is going to be a scary proposition for me. But um, in the meantime, I can get some... Get whatever, you know, small advantage you can. Get the last hits like I'm doing here. I mean, ultimately, I I'm behind. Uh, he's... He's got my number at this point. So I got minions going his way now. Uh, and here he comes back. And he comes right at me. 
Yeah, it's going to create a, a hit point advantage. Another one. You see the cooldown on the thing is just it's faster than my Q, and that's how he outpokes you. And then keeps me, forcing me to go back here. Um, I, I get my boots and I, I try to get. Uh, this is a mistake. Uh, you know I I should have just gone for my regular hit points. You know gotten the ruby crystal for the mallet, but I decide to go with armor first thinking it's going to help me but Olaf's damage is pure the armor doesn't help not yet if I yeah see look he comes right at me and I just I can't slow him down if he had hit me with that axe there I could have been killed right there possibly he misses the second axe thankfully but uh, Lane's pushing now and he wants to be more and more aggressive so unfortunately it's a good strategy I, I can't, I can't stop him right now. Not when he's uh, scary like this. All I can do is hope to get whatever last hits I can, and in a real game, I would hope for a, a gank. Reckless swing, right on my teeth that time, and now you're gonna see that Olaf doesn't care about a turret dive either. Uh, I'm too low. He, I knew it, but there's nothing I could do. He wasn't even close. He didn't need the heal. He was just whatever. And that's good. That's that's really all I wanted to show you. He he gets my turret. He gets me. He outfarms me. And uh, you know he's good, but uh, you see the the counter. You know how how one hero can definitely counter the other his axe can stop my passive he's got pure damage to go through my uh my courage armor and magic resist and uh his poke is a faster cue down cool down than my q now like i said that now olaf has his share of disadvantages you know he can be threatened by a number of different heroes that garen is resistant to um a lot of ad ranges can come at uh, Olaf and you know kite him around and have their way with him and Garen doesn't have that weakness because he can approach most AD carries um, there's a lot of AP carries that uh, you know Vlad can uh, deal with Olaf pretty well and Garen can hold his old own against Vlad uh, very well especially they both race to level 9 and I think by then Gary's Garen's tank gear so you, you've got a trade-off you know p picking top is counter picking you know you want to try and avoid getting counter picked and try and do some counter picking now garen is great against so many heroes it's he's almost like a built-in counter pick to whoever you're going with a few exceptions that we've kind of talked about here um all right so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next section of the guide talk a little bit about team composition and the type of teams that really allow garen to shine um, this is, uh, would be probably like my ideal, uh, team here. I mean, you can substitute a number of heroes for other ones here, but this is just my version of an ideal team comp for Garen. You've got Ash, uh, with a fantastic initiate, a fantastic late game. Um, she's relevant at all times of the game. She's got kind of a weak early game. So, uh, we've got Sona here, who has a fantastic early game. Her harass is great, her healing is great, and her ult is game-changing. So you've got two great uh, teams, uh, battle-changing fights right here between these two. Um, Lux going mid. Uh, Lux is just as dangerous as Morgana for the exact same reasons. Um, People think Morgana's alt is better than Lux's, and that's why she gets the ban usually in the pick. I don't know. It depends on the team comp. For a team comp like this, where you know you've got the Demacian twins, like you're gonna have Garen coming in to start the fight, and Lux uh, dropping her AOE after uh, Sona and Ash alt, well, then she becomes like a long range finisher slash AOE team fight hell on earth. Um, her her AoE version of Tormented Soil is a little bit quicker. You get the spike damage in there and they can't run out of it. Also her snare will pick up two people, which is cool. 
um, Nocturne in the Jungle. I just love this. Uh, I think his alt is fantastic. I think his scaling is fantastic. He scales into late game a lot better than comparable junglers that gank, you know, on the same par as Nocturne. A good Nocturne player is hard to find, though. But if you got got one in your back pocket, you got yourself a, a, a gem to build a team around. Um, so this would be an example of, an, uh, of a team comp. Um, now I'll go ahead and show you a live game. Uh, it's just a regular normal game. I'm not queued up with anyone, but uh, we'll sort of, sh sort of show you uh, Garen in a team fight and Garen mid game and, and sort of see what, what he can do on his own. And, and with a, an Ash too. I just love having Ash. I think they work very, very well together, especially with the build that I'm going to show you. Okay, so here we go. All right, in this clip, uh, I've laned, I've spared you the laning phase. Um, I laned against a Garen, and uh, let's just say I beat him. I doubled his farm, and I got a kill on him. Uh, so I'm coming in for a team fight here, and let's just see. All right, take care of the Ratmo real quick. Um, I don't have any items here. I'm still dealing, working with just boots, so uh, that, that sort of impairs me here. I get another kill on there, Garen. Um, it was a good engage for us. They, they were a little bit outnumbered there. Um, okay, so moving on. So that was a, a good two kills for me, just cleanup kills again. And, and you'll see that a lot. You know, Garen gets the cleanup kills. Don't feel like scared or you don't want to get the kills. You're worried about casting. It's killed secured. There is no chaosing in this game. Um, for the most part, there's a few rare exceptions, but, uh, yeah, for the most part, there's no casting. You get, finish them off. That's what your job is. Make sure you get those kills. So moving on here, I've got 4k to spend. As you see, uh, I'm going to need to go back very shortly and yeah, there we go back. I need to buy my mallet first item. Uh, I can get the, my first trip back here. I get the boots and the mallet. It's kind of a, a big jump. Um, I teleport back, put some pressure on the turret, there's enemy Garen, so you can kind of see he's stupid to engage with all this minion aggro anyway, but I almost completely ignore all of his damage anyway, and I get him to below half uh, without me taking much at all. So he's in threat range right now, if I had my ult up he'd be in threat range. Um, Okay, Janna comes up. Now, Janna's low. So let's take a look at some tower diving here right now. I know that they can, don't have the damage to do anything. I hit Janna, spin, she's dead. Uh, walk out of turret range. Engage on Garen and ignore him and the minions. He's I, I clear the minion aggro in the bush here and come back for more. Uh, as you see Ash. Now, let's take a look at Ash and Garen together. Um, I want him bad, so I say let's go tower dive some more. Uh, taking turret hits, hit him, alt him, boom, get out of the way, and Ash can get the, the cleans up. Ash cleans it up. Um, works perfectly. Um, there's going to be a lot more action with me and Ash here pretty quick. And you see Garen, the other enemy Garen is already giving up. Good game. You know, that's a bad attitude to have. Um, I did, I'm 4 0 now, and, and I did double his creeps um, during the laning phase. Okay, so here comes uh, Udir, comes at me, Ash uh, is able to kite, and see, I'm still coming at him, I'm not scared of Udir, even with low health like this. Uh, Ash and I, with our two slow effects, we can lock him up pretty good. I gotta get out of here right, right now, so, um, yeah, I back up, Janna blows her alt, heals up uh, Udir, um, and now it's time for me to get back. All right. So Ash is going to cover my top for a second here. I heal, um, shop a little bit, get some armor. And now, while I'm back at base, they bring everybody to our blue to chase the Annie. So there's a big fight breaking out that I'm not quite there for. So I'm going to, I'm heading there quick. I'm coming. So I'll get, we'll see what happens when I get there. So they're scattering us. They're scattering us here for, I show up. And boom, it's like dominoes. They just fall. They get, they start running from me. Um, now look at what you can do with the mallet here and some uh, clever auto-attacking. So you attack, boom. 
the slow applies from the queue. And you want, I'm going at two, you always attack the one who's not running. So there's always going to be one who's not running. Okay, now Timo is almost locked up here. I got three on me. It's cool, I'm Garen, my auto attacks, get him, and now I walk away from it. Here comes uh, Kog'Maw, he flashes to try and get me, and here's my friend Ash, coming back. Now it's me and Ash again. She locks him up, she's got a, a slow on him, I'm coming in. I'm low, so I gotta be kinda careful, I gotta, she needs to get the vision first. Uh, I get ignited, or ignited, and, uh, and the shroom, my heel comes up in just a good time for it to come up there. Now we take a look at this here. Um, Ash hits him once. I finish him off with the alt. He's coming at me. I'm low. He's going to get me. Cog hits me with his alt or his passive, but the bait was too hard for Udir. I baited him too hard. Um, 7 and 0 now. Watch out for that team mushroom that's right there in the in the sh in the bush and my teammates almost trigger it. But uh, thankfully they don't, and I, I make it out in time. Um, more shopping. And uh, there's some more fights going on here before this uh, gets too far. It's already kind of out of hand, but you can see the net result of uh, some good team fighting. All right. Um, just taking a look. I've got top kills and top creeps um, of either team. So that's all I really look for. I mean, you can't really ask for more than that. Ash with a, an arrow, long range, and yes, I will engage under a turret because I'm Garen. Uh, you can ignore turrets with my setup here. That's one of the, the keys to this. You ha I help get the assist on that Garen. Inferior Garen. Um, here we go, poking more. This is a really good Ash. Knows how to work with, uh, with Garen's. Um, alrighty, I just triggered an egg, which was not smart, but had to be done. They're coming at us hard. They don't want to give up, but I guess, okay, we get some ch we get a chance to back now. My teleport will be back up here in a second. And there'll be more action real soon. Healing up. decided to teleport mid okay so there's three of them there I teleport and I click on I tell him to go 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 um, yeah starting with Udir he can't get anywhere I alt him and lock him up Ash finishes him off um, good that's fine I don't care who gets the kill I really don't um, it, it means nothing to me um, Garen gets ch stupid here look how far out he comes but that mean Ash together we, we can lock him up. Um, yeah. I don't know what that was. This Garen's... He's strange. He just ulted there. I don't get that. Um, Ash and I just kiting, locking him up. Where is he going to go? And I hit him once. Ash, her ignite finishes it off. So, sorry, Garen. Um, he try he's building tanky, but uh, he doesn't know how to play him really. He alted someone at full health. I don't know if it was me or Ash, but it did no damage. Alright. We got Annie back, and it looks like we're going to go ahead and engage under this turret with support from GP. Udir Falls. Um, GP takes care of Janna with his alt, which is kind of sad. Um, moving on here. Take out the turret. And that's pretty much it. So 8 0 and 6, they're about to click surrender here. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to show you a little bit just how Garen sort of plays out in team fights and different things he can do. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I want to show you. Uh, for my second Garen video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to leave your comments, good or bad. Uh, I take everything into consideration, as long as it's not a straight troll. Um, you know, if you come up with some ideas of how I can improve, I'll give it a try. Um, you know, if it's got some logic behind it. Uh, make sure you bring your math craft with you. 
I mean, don't just uh, say Garen's a carry and then bring no evidence to show how he uh, can do that. So either way, um, leave your comments, and uh, we'll see you in the next guide. Thanks for watching.